All right, in this video, we'll be talking about homeostasis. Homeostasis is the idea of organism keeping a constant uh, internal norm. Could be salt concentrations, could be temperature, could be a whole lot of things. So we're going to kind of go through several of those as we look at some different terms here. So here's homeostasis again. The body systems are trying to regulate the norms that are going on in the body. The first thing that we're going to look at is osmoregulation, which is the balance of the internal concentration of water in your body versus the concentration of water on the outside. It could be that there's no concentration of water on the outside like, you know, terrestrial animals. And so they have to figure out how to keep water in their bodies. And also with fish, they have to figure out how to make sure that they don't become like the water around them unless you're one of these guys which is an osmoconformer. An osmoconformer is an organism that is at equilibrium with their external environment. These are mostly uh, ocean invertebrates like sponges and other simpler life forms. There are two categories that we would put in here, and these are stenohaline organisms. Um, stenohaline organisms are animals that have a very narrow range of salinity change. I mean, basically, any organism that we're going to talk about could fit here as well, uh, as far as fish. Um, so some saltwater fish, they can't have any fresh water at all. They have a very narrow range of salinity, and that would be called uh, stenohaline. And then there's urihaline, which uh, this is able to uh, have a broad range of salinity. So they could, also, they could survive in the ocean, but they could also survive in fresh water or an estuary, this would be like a salmon, would be a great example of a urihalian organism. One, another category are called hyperosmotic regulators. And so hyper means more than, and so the fluids inside are more concentrated than the fluids outside. And so this would be like freshwater fish. They're, they need to maintain a certain uh, concentration of body fluids inside that is much greater than the body fluids are much more greater than the water surrounding them. And so they have uh, mechanisms to do that. The opposite of that is when the water is salty and that would be like a hypoosmotic regulator. And so marine fish are more hypoosmotic in their uh, mechanisms. And so their body fluids are much less concentrated than the surrounding water. And so they have to make um, adjustments for that. For terrestrial animals, um, that don't have co water constantly surrounding them. We still lose water through respiration, through just evaporation off of our bodies, sweat and, and so forth. And so we have to maintain water levels through structures like kidneys. So that brings me to the next point, excretion. <clears throat> excretion is just uh, dealing with the um, urinary wastes or um, digestive wastes that are not solid waste. And so this would be like dealing with urea or uh, ammonia levels in the blood, especially. And so um, a lot of lower life forms have a structure called a nephridium, which is basically um, a primitive kidney and it maintains osmotic balance. It also removes uh, waste or like nitrogenous waste from the body, which is like basically your urea or uh, ammonia. And then more advanced life forms um, have something called a kidney. And this works with the circulatory system in order to filter blood, maintain blood pressure, water, and et cetera. All right, so let's talk a little bit about temperature regulation. How do organisms regulate their body temperature? One of those is called ectothermy. Ectothermy is where the body temperature is regulated through the surrounding environment. And so here's a picture of this um, reptile just sitting on this rock so he can warm up. Uh, he's... Um, He's cold, so he gets on the rock in order to warm up because there, there's a lot more sunshine there, and he's able to warm his body temperature up. And so sometimes these animals are called cold-blooded. It's kind of a weird uh, misnomer because they're not they're not cold-blooded, I guess, unless they like go in the water or hide in the shade or something. Um, but they have to maintain their temperature through behavioral adjustments. So they actually have to go get on a rock or get in the shade or whatever in order to compensate for their temperature. And especially if you consider um, just the act of metabolism also will heat the body up. And so they have to make adjustments accordingly for that. And the other one is called endothermy. And endothermy is where the body temperature is maintained from within. And so this polar bear here has uh, mechanisms inside his body in order to keep him warm. 
Um, he also has mechanisms, of course, outside his body, like his fur and other things to keep him warm as well. And so talking about a couple of different modifications that occur uh, in order to stay cool, some animals um, are fossorial, which means that they live in the ground. And so this allows them to keep cool because inside the ground is um, cooler than outside the ground. Some animals are nocturnal, meaning that they're active at night more, more so than they are during the day. Other animals like ourselves and others have something called evaporative cooling, where when we sweat, the sweat evaporates off our skin and it gives us this cooling effect and lowers our body temperature. There are some other um, modifications that animals use during cold weather. Hibernation is one of them, where they sleep for long periods in order to decrease the amount of energy needed to maintain. And so they'll sleep uh, really long periods during the winter when it's cold, so they don't have to maintain their body. Um, they can have insulation. It's another thing that bears do, other animals do, which is basically decreased conductance. If you have insulation, there's less heat escaping from your body. And so that uh, allows you to keep that. There's countercurrent heat exchange, which I don't have a picture for, which is sad. Um, so countercurrent heat exchange is that the warm blood from the middle of your body keeps the extremity warm as it circulates and comes back in and out of those extremities. And then for some organisms, they don't really hibernate. They have a state that's called torpor, which is just where they kind of sleep really deeply during the day. Uh, bats are a great example of this. And so bats will sleep really deeply during the day to conserve uh, energy and then come out of that state of torpor at night in order to hunt. And then lastly is circulation and respiration. There are two kinds of circulatory systems that we'll look at in the animal kingdom. There are open circulatory systems and closed. An open system is where the blood is open into the body cavities. And so you can kind of get the idea here. You have, you still have blood vessels. You usually still have a heart and the heart is pumping it out, but those fluids just kind of return on their own back to the heart before they're pumped back out versus a closed circulatory system where all of the vessels are closed and this is just stays in a unit where and the body cavity does not have blood in it. And then gas exchange, which is essentially another word for respiration, um, exchanging CO2 for O2. Um, there are a couple of different structures that use to do this. Uh, animals have gills. Uh, well, some animals just do it through their skin. They have gas exchange on their skin. Uh, other animals use gills, which is a form for gas exchange in the water. And then uh, lungs are typically used gas exchange in the air. Some animals are able to use both gills and lungs.